surprised both of you guys because you've both been in the business, stand-up comedy business for so many years, into decades, and I'm always fascinated by the comedians that don't quite make it, the unheralded comics, who are the comics comics that make the comedians laugh, but for whatever reason, either they die prematurely, which is what happens sometimes, or they just don't hold on to the fame as long as their comrades do. Who were some of the comics you saw in the clubs back in the day who really stood out to you that we won't know about? David? Oh, You're supposed to point to me. David Feldman's one of them. <laughs> David Feldman, would, besides David. Well, there was Feldman the Clown. <laughs> uh, my, my favorite comic of all time has died so young, a guy named Ronnie Shakes. Oh, yeah. And he wrote these wonderful, wonderful jokes. Uh, his most famous joke was about seeing a therapist for many, many years. He said, uh, and seeing the therapist for 12 years yesterday, he said something that brought tears to my eyes. No ambla inglés. <laughs> <laughs> but my favorite joke of his lately is about, I, I live every day as if it were my last. I, I wake up, I cough up blood. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he was great, he had a lot of yeah. Tonight Show appearances, yeah, but, he, yeah. but he's just one of these guys that only comedians really know about him today. Yeah. Gilbert Gottfried was a good friend of his. Yeah. Um, who else comes to mind? Robin Williams could have been great. <laughs> <laughs> and you work with Robin. Yeah. I was his musical director, which is one of the weirdest credits because he's not a good singer. <laughs> but, um, he did one of my songs on Mork and Mindy. Really? Yep. This is IMDb trivia we're getting right here tonight, guys. This is stuff I don't even know about. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think Andy Kindler is one of those guys today. Does anyone know Andy Kindler, the comedian? Got a few. Yeah, we're in a comedy theater here. Uh, Andy Kindler is like one of my favorite. What? Well, he's just a brilliant comedian. Brilliant comedian. Who said to me recently that he's starting to fear, feel sympathy for Hitler, <laughs> which is different than being a Nazi sympathizer. He just he understands that that Hitler really must have been not thinking clearly when he decided to invade Czechoslovakia, because it's so clear that that was the wrong move. But anyway, <laughs> to a show. You think he might have been unbalanced? Is yeah. that what Andy thinks? Yeah. Hitler is definitely a fascination of Andy's. <laughs> you, opened, you opened for him at his State of the Industry address yes, in, in Montreal. For Hitler? <laughs> you opened for Hitler? <laughs> and he was a frequent guest on Dr. Katz, professional therapist, which is the show that put you on the map, I guess, and uh, really launched a lot. I mean, it helped so many young comedians. John Benjamin. John Benjamin, right. your son on the show. But even the guests on the show, well, some young comedians Ray getting Romano exposure. Was the, uh, Laura Silverman? Laura Silverman, but Ray said that it was the first time he got any attention to the press. Ray Romano. Was from Dr. Katz, yeah. I, I, wanna, I have Dave a clip Chappelle. here. Dave Chappelle, so many, David Cross, so many people. David Feldman, you were on the show. Yeah, yeah that's true. Yes, my psychiatrist, this is true, my psychiatrist and I have gotten into long debates over who is more attractive, Laura Silverman or Sarah Silverman. I swear to God. It's like, and, and then it got to the point where I was so depressed I couldn't remember who I was more attracted to. I don't know. But, but regardless of who, who is the more attractive woman, you still pay the therapist. <laughs> is Laura single, by the way? Have you, are you still in touch with her? Yeah, she is. She is? Oh, she's, she is very attractive. That's cool. Sarah's sister. Yeah. yeah, and she's a voice. Anyway, I want to show a clip of the show that featured Andy Kindler, uh, just so people get a taste, and I just love you and him. Oh, man, Andy Kindler and Jonathan Katz. Dr. Katz, the best. <laughs> that was the best job. I'd go to work and I'd laugh for six hours, and I'd get paid. Yeah, and, 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 and your relationship with, with John Benjamin, who's your son on the show, this fascinates me too because you, didn't, you don't have a son in real life. You have two daughters in real life. Right. But, but, but uh, I feel you can borrow one here. <laughs> <laughs> it's weird that I feel in a certain sense more related to my cartoon son than my own daughters. Yeah. <laughs> because they moved to Philadelphia, my daughters. My son is on YouTube. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> And you see him, you do the Dr. Katz live shows now. You're touring with these. Yeah. You were just in D.C. at the top of the month. Great. How, how did that go? Yeah, D.C. was great. Toronto was great. So we're going back to San Francisco to do another festival. In January, Sketchfest. Yep. Doing Dr. Katz live is very different because you don't have the luxury of editing. 
but you do have the luxury of my energy. <laughs> <laughs> I was exhausted. 